for 30 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to claim a half hour this afternoon to speak about the citizens of the nation's capital who are full and equal citizens of the United States of America. That nation's capital that was born with the nation itself, was born with the Constitution. Among its oldest citizens are the citizens of this very city where the Congress does its work. Now, there is a complicated relationship between the federal government and the nation's capital, but one thing has never been complicated. The founders and every American ever since have understood that the citizens of the nation's capital are entitled to the same constitutional rights and democratic rights as every other American citizen. Now, I've come to the floor because I think many members who are incumbents may have forgotten, and there is the largest class of new members who may be surprised by what they may be about to experience on this floor with respect to the local jurisdiction that they know nothing of and have nothing to do with. The new members have come with a special distaste for federal intervention, even into federal affairs, and I respect that. I think that they perhaps would be among the first members to recognize that the powerful federal government should never snatch local control from a local jurisdiction. Indeed, you may be about to experience something that is so much of a surprise that it's a kind of out-of-body experience. When you're asked to actually consider a budget that this Congress had nothing to do with, where every living cent was raised by the people I represent, you may be asked to overturn local laws simply because they are different from the laws you would have passed in your own local jurisdiction where there is no federal imprimatur on these local laws at all. Now, gradually Congress has come to understand that the United States loses its own credibility as the leader of democracy around the world when it does not treat the nation's, it's the citizens of the nation's capital as full and equal citizens. Congressional jurisdiction over the District of Columbia appears in the Constitution, but in 1973, Congress recognized that it was wrong, wrong to rule the local jurisdiction from the Congress, so it delegated what we call home rule, or the right to self-government, to the District of Columbia. Now, that marked a historic realization that local residents have to govern themselves locally, that it was wrong that the nation's capital was the only place, this place, where Congress meets with no local democracy, where the citizens, hundreds of thousands, had no say on their own local affairs. I know it's hard to believe that could ever have occurred anywhere in the United States since local control is among the very first principles of the founding of our country. But only in 1973 
did your nation's capital get an elected government, an elected mayor, elected city council? A lot of that had to do with, to be fair, Southern Democrats, although the district uh, for 150 years was a majority white dis district, the old time Southern Democrats saw the large African American population here uh, as reason to keep the district from having any local self-government. Republicans weren't much a part of that, and I hope they won't be much a part of that today. Um, the promise to delegate the same kind of local control to the residents of the nation's capital as we presume, even without thinking, is the case for every other local jurisdiction. That promise has been mostly kept. Mayor Gray runs the city. The city council chair passes the law, laws, except when Congress decides, or rather some members of Congress decide to break that promise of d democracy and intervene into the affairs of a local jurisdiction for one reason and one reason only, that they simply disagree with the decisions that the local jurisdiction has made. Imagine if in your own district uh, from this Congress I disagreed with some of your decisions and I could then overturn those decisions. My colleagues, I am asking you not to do to us what you would not have done to you. We ask only that you apply the same standard of democracy here in the nation's capital that you insist on in your own district. Cannot be for one standard of democracy for the Egyptian people who are now rising up to demand democracy without being for the same standard uh, in your own nation's capital. You wouldn't intervene and tell the Egyptians what to do, even when you disagreed with it. We ask you in the name of the founders, in the name of American democracy, do not do that to the residents of the District of Columbia. It is impossible to justify a standard for democracy except when you disagree with the decisions that have been made. I